Hey y'all, it's Rock Crim coming to you with another video, and today, well, the finale of The Wheel of Time just happened, and I have to say, there's a lot of love, and there's stuff that I, parents are just the worst in this episode. I have no idea what's going on in his head. He just watched Loyal get stabbed, and he didn't even pick up an axe and kill Pat and Payne. I know there's a couple fades there, and they'd have stopped him, and they'd probably kill him, but at least try to do something, at least in this whole episode, he did nothing. So, we got that out of the way. Anyways, I'm Elisa, and those two unnamed, I'm, I'm sure if I had to press, press the button, they would be named. You know, those other two uh, women that could channel, that aren't Nynaeve and Egwene. Um, they probably had a name if I would pushed the button, but... I didn't, so I don't know who they are. But um, one of them had the red dot of Malkier. I dig it. I understand it. Anyhow, they die. Amelisa pulls too much power out of them. And then she tries to pull too much power out of Egwene, and Nanive stops that. And then Nanive is near death while Amelisa burns out. But they did an amazing thing. I mean, 10,000 Trollocs and 60 Fades. All dead. All of them dead. That's pretty fucking rad. And if it costs a few lives to do that, I mean, up in the tower, I'm not sure what they were calling it. There was a, there's Tarwin's Gap, but there's also a fort up there, I guess. Everyone in that fort is dead. Agamar and all his homies, they're all dead. The Trollocs and Fades got through Tarwin's Gap. But Amelisa... Use the one power. She's the most trained in it, right? Because Egwene and Nenave have no training, but they have immense power. They're so powerful in the one power, but they're not trained. So Amelisa uses that power and destroys an entire Trolloc army. That's awesome. That's badass shit. Well, her brother died. She died. Okay, it makes some symmetry there. I get it. Anyhow, Rand, being shown a perfect life by Ishamayel. What does he do? He says, nah, it's not what she would want. This is what I would want, yeah. But the girl right here, Egwene, this isn't the life she wants. So I'm going to obliterate you, Ishamayel. That was awesome. Totally awesome. Yeah. And when when Egwene, or when or Moraine got shielded, I didn't realize she was stilled. Like, he did it and tied a knot. He shielded her and tied a knot. I didn't know that's what he was doing, but at the end of the episode, she says, I can't channel anymore, so I can't renew our bond or anything to Lon. And, uh, yeah. Fuck. Woo! Uh... Parent does nothing the entire episode. That lets me down. I like that character. I like Marcus Rutherford a lot. I think he's doing a great job, but <laughs> they unearth the Horn of Valir and then Pat and Payne kills everybody. Well, that's cool. I'm glad Pat and Payne gets more to do in this season. And I guess he cut the ropes of the drawbridge, something like that. So we couldn't stop the Trollocs from getting in. I think that was kind of the idea. Amelisa was more than capable with the help of Nynaeve and Egwene and those other two unnamed ladies to uh, stop the Trollocs. That was rad. Totally rad. But, Parent does nothing. I don't know what Pat and Payne's powers are in this show. I have no idea. So I can't say like, he could have just grabbed an axe and chopped him in half. Because Perrin, in the books, I know, could do that. Perrin, in the books, could do that. He would just chop a peddler in half. This peddler might have some power. And, of course, he had a couple fades with him. I have my doubts that Uno, Nasima, and Lord, whatever his name is, couldn't have killed one of them. But I've read the books. They do this shit. Uno is a badass motherfucker, and he's dead now, and we're not going to see him again in the show. Loyal better not be dead. 
I hopefully we pick up where they're healing him because he's a homie. And I hope they heal Uno. And if Masema was there, I hope they heal him. And if Ingtar is anywhere near here, I need them to get him too because Pat and Payne stole the Horn of Belier and he's on his way. Well, somewhere west. I don't know. He didn't write it in blood on the wall, as far as I know. Perrin ran away, so we don't know what happened after he killed Loyal. Yeah, I honestly don't know. But, uh, yeah. Rand. Perfect Rand move, just like last week. I'm going to go by myself. So no one else has to die. If I'm the Dragon Reborn, I ain't letting any of my friends die. And none of his friends died. Amazingly. One of them ran away like a coward. Uh, and two of them almost died, which was rad. Good to see. Uh, Moraine is suffering from being shielded by a man and having no way to get out of it. That's cool. Uh, Lion... Being there at the end, that was cool. Just saying. I mean, the episode is everything I wanted and more. I mean, and there's a flag. It's coming all the way back, holding on the offense. Sorry, every Wheel of Time fan. This was watching the game tonight, and anyhow, uh, yeah, episode eight, totally rad. Oh, oh yeah, look at that! Damn. But look at him. Look at him though. He's like grabbing it. Like From the spot of the foul, at least. Yeah, sorry. Oh, offsetting penalties. We'll do the whole play over. That's lame. Anyhow. Face mask game. Well, duh. Holding. Holding. <laughs> yeah, it's all junk. The NFL is junk. Anyways, uh, Rand leaving on his own and telling Moraine... Oops. to tell him he died. He doesn't want them to know he's going to go insane. He doesn't want them to understand that he's going to break the world again. He has to go away. And that's so rand. It's perfect rand. Moraine says, I can't lie. At that moment, I, I do believe she could. But she's so, so used to not doing it. She could. Anyhow, that's a bid. Like if you liked it. Share it out there if you think I have any valid points. And uh, subscribe. If you want more shitty content like this. Peace.